Over the last few weeks, I've been trying to find an alternative to my to-do list application. And the to-do list application that I've been using for many, many years is Todoist. It is a very good application, but they've been pulling features out of the Linux version for a little while now, and I'm not all that happy about it, so I've been trying to find something different that has some of the same features. And I haven't had a lot of luck, despite there being a ton of to-do applications on Linux. Most of them are either too simplistic or are too full-featured. They just have a ton of cruft in there that I don't really need, note-taking and all this stuff. I don't need that in my to-do application. I just want something that gives me a list and gives me some ability to do recurring tasks and projects and stuff like that. So when I found an application called Sleek, I was a little skeptical because by this point I'd tried, like I said, about six of them or so, and I hadn't had much luck. So I didn't have high expectations for Sleek, but I found myself pretty impressed, so that's why I'm going to make a video about it today. So let me show you what Sleek looks like. This is the Sleek application, and I'm not sure if it's dark mode out of the box, so I think I might have changed that. So if you open this up and it's light mode, just know that there is a dark mode. I'll talk about that in a minute. But other than that, I've done nothing to this application other than add a few tasks. And overall, it's very simple. It uses the todo.txt standard. So basically what it does is just creates a todo.txt file somewhere on your system. You can choose where, and it saves all the information to that. That's all it does. And then it displays the information in that file here. And what's cool about that is that it means you can have different lists. So if you want to have a to-do list for work and a to-do list for grocery shopping or around your house or whatever, you can do that. All you'd have to do is open up that other application. So just hit the file button, find yourself another to-do.txt file here somewhere or create a new one and you're good to go. And it has tabs, so it'll actually show the list that you have open up at the top. Now, at first, I thought that, that was just going to be way too simple because how could you have all the features that I would personally need in a .txt file? It didn't really make all that much sense to me, but the application adds several things that Todoist has, but still keeps that simplicity of using a .txt file as the backend. So let me show you what I mean. So let's go ahead and open up the add task dialog here just by hitting the plus button. There is a key binding, but I just used the button. And really what you can do here is several things. So first, you can set the priority, and you do that by choosing the letter of priority that you want. So the higher in the alphabet you have it, the higher the priority. So letter A would be the highest priority, letter Z would be the lowest priority. It's kind of pedestrian when it comes to priority, but it works, right? It's very simple, just like you'd expect and it's easy to choose so you don't have to choose from the drop down you can just type in b and it would be the b level of priority you know what i mean it'd be it's very easy to do it just that way like i said it's a little pedestrian because if you have used some of the more full featured to doist like applications they have flags and color coding and stuff like that this one here done by letters and it does have color coding but it's not anything special but it works, right? That's really all you need, and it wor and it works just fine. So that's priority. So if you want to then do a task, you give the name of the task. So do BTRFS video, and then let's just say I wanted to have that thing a recurring video. I don't, I don't really want to do a recurring task on that particular task, but let's just say I wanted to do that. I could do rec or REC and then colon, and then I can do a special special code to tell it how often I want it to recur. So if I wanted to do daily, I'd do D. If I wanted to do weekly, I could do W for weekly. If I wanted to do monthly, I could do M for monthly. If I wanted to do it every three weeks, I could do three W and it would recur every three weeks. Uh, also, if I wanted to do it every three days, I could do it every three days, just like rec colon 3D. Now, that's really cool because if you have ever used Todoist before, Todoist has a function where if you wanted to, say, schedule a video for a certain time. So let's just say I wanted to do do Butterfest video on Thursday at noon. I could then save that and it would schedule that to-do list item for Thursday at noon. So it's obviously not as context aware as Todoist is, but it, you can do things like do and then the date. So 2022. Uh, 0901, whatever it happens to be. Uh, the one thing that I haven't found is whether or not you can do a time. 
if you do a, a drop down here in the actual calendar, it doesn't show time anywhere. So I'm not sure if you can do that. I don't ever really need anything that specific. So if that's missing, that's not that big of a deal. Like I said, you can do recurrence with REC and then colon and then the shorthand for daily, weekly, monthly, and so on. Now, where do you find all that stuff? So you can find all that stuff in the help. So there is a very nice help page here that is always accessible. It will show you how to do things like recurrence. So you can do things like D for daily, B for each business day, week, W for weekly, M for monthly, year for annual, annually. You can also specify a different interval, interval. So like I said, 3M to re repeat every third month or 3D for every third day. And that's really, really nice. Uh, same thing for dates. You can do the date with year, year, month, month, day, day. Now, the one thing that, like I said, it's not here is the time. It doesn't seem to allow you to do time, which is okay for me, but it might be something that you miss out on. Now, another cool thing that it does do is it does do friendly date names. So like tomorrow next Tuesday or end of February will be converted into appropriate formatted dates. So, so if we go back here and do uh, video, uh, do colon tomorrow, and then hit save, it will have a video for tomorrow, which is the 30th, which is, you know, that's really cool. The fact that it has that context to where kind of like to doist has is very, very nice. Now I wish you didn't have to type in the do part. So if I do new video tomorrow and hit save, all it's going to do is say is do regular to-do list apps with no date attached to them. So you have to do that do part first. I wish it didn't have to do that, but it's not that big of a deal. So outside of adding new tasks and, and things like that, you can also add things like contexts and projects. So if you click the plus button here and let's just say you wanted to add a task to a project. So I would say um, rice add new rice to collection now if i wanted to add that to a project i would just do rices and that would create a new project called rices and if i wanted to add some con a context to that i'd do at and i could then do rices for that as well then you could mess around with the due date weekly and stuff like that just like normal and that shows the context and the project in color-coded notations next to the application. Now, you're probably wondering what contexts are. Contexts are things that have to do with the whole getting things done style of productivity. So if you're not familiar with that, which I'm not at all, it kind of gives you an idea of where those tasks are supposed to take place. So things like at home, at work, things like that. So that's where really the context part of it for projects, that's more self-explanatory when you have a gigantic piece of work that you need to get done. Each part of that project could be a to-do list entry, and then you use the project tag to kind of put all those things together as part of one piece of work. So that is context and projects, which is again, something that I didn't know that it had when I first started. And when I got into this to do this help page, that is something that Todoist has. So again, this is a very good alternative to Todoist. Now, outside of that, it does have a few settings. So you, it has several languages that are available to you. It gives you notifications. So when you have something that is due, it will send you a notification. It'll minimize the application to the tray bar if that's something that you want. Uh, by default, the error and event logging is turned off. I turned that on just to give them some information. Uh, so that is opt-in. It has dark and light mode, so you can choose between those. It has a compact view, which means that makes it a little bit less big. So by default, this is what it looks like. It has all the bigger buttons and stuff. I turned that off, made it a little bit more compact. And it does have tabs. So if you have multiple to-do files, you can add tabs. And then there's a default zoom here as well. So that is sleek. It is a very good little application that has a ton of features and way more features than I thought it would have given the fact that it uses uses a .txt file as the back end. So it gives you all these contexts and projects and giving you the ability to do recurrence and stuff like that. And it just is a very, very good application. I'm astonished really at how good it is. So that's going to be my new to-do application. Goodbye Todoist for now. 
So if you have thoughts on this, you can leave those in the comment section below. You can follow me on Twitter at LinuxCast. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast, just like all of these fine people. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all amazing. The channel would not be where it is without you, so thank you so very, very much for your support. If you want to support me on Patreon, you can get a 10% discount by supporting me a year in advance. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.